If you're like me, there's one question that you kept asking yourself throughout this book. How does anybody go toilet? We're proof! Hey guys, it's me Marcus aka The Mad Dog and we're back with another video. Written by Joe Henderson, who I first confused as the guy who created The Moppets and illustrated by Lee Garbett, the first issue with Skyward was published by Image Comics in April of 2018, with the 15th and final issue being released in July of 2019. And what would you do if you woke up one day and gravity just no longer existed? For Willa Fowler, her scientist father Nate and everybody else on planet Earth, that became a reality 20 years ago on G-Day. Now in a world that is adapted to floating about, companies have managed to prosper and we've learned how to live in our new environment. But when Willow is forced to leave Chicago, what secrets and horrors will she find? This book has such a unique art style. It's so dynamic and vibrant and with a book that's got this topic, it managed to tackle the main thing well and just use the space that's in the panel. A concept like this belongs in comics because it's all about just seeing how this world adapts. It doesn't feel like a style that would become popular over at Marvel or DC, even though I do know that Garbett worked on Loki Agent of Asgard, which was actually one of the first books that I reviewed on this channel. But at the same time, this illustration style helped it to stand apart from other books. However, to get one of the negatives out of the way quickly, where I did find it lacking was in the characterization. Willa looked great and unique, but when it came to a lot of the other characters, especially some that were third or fourth tier down, they were all just a bit bland facially and there were some characters that I genuinely confused with other ones. Sure they all still had something unique about them in the design whether that be in the clothing or the physical appearance. So this might seem a bit nitpicky but at the same time if what I'm mostly looking at is a character's face then they should probably do what my mum always used to tell me if I ever went in a sulk and change your face. What is a real strength of this book and that I can't use as a compliment to a lot of other titles is just how it handled the aspect of floating. Every item in the frame followed those rules that were set and at the same time even though there wasn't any gravity items and objects still had weight to them. Blood would linger in the air, balloons littered the sky, and smoke just kind of seemed to hover there. And what's something that immediately jumps out as great about this book, and that I'll probably talk about when I get into the story part, is that it covers aspects of this world that I wouldn't have initially considered. It's why I enjoyed Why the Last Man so much, because I always want to be surprised by what's going on in these alternate Earths that I'm not a part of. Show me what's different about it, don't just tell me, and because of the art in this book, it really managed to just capture that aspect and that feel. But for as much praise as I'm giving to the physical attributes of the stuff within the panel, when I did often look at the line work that was going on in the background, it did feel a little bit incomplete. I get that this is just part of Garbett's style, but if I found myself lingering on a page for a little bit too long, I did just find those things that didn't feel finished off. And I may be looking into it a little bit too deep here, but I just loved the way that motion was illustrated. A character that was going at speed was accompanied by a blurred background, any kind of physical impact had lines around it, and immersion just goes a long way for me because that is the real strength of this medium and I think that this highlights it well. Also when a character shot a gun, the weird bang came in smoke and sometimes that's one of those things that can really pull me out of a story but for some reason it just worked here. In saying that though there were a few fight scenes and I did feel like they were lacking. I often felt like I was just watching the highlights of a fight and I was never really getting the intricacies of it. And because of that I couldn't really build a sense of tension because I knew that in the very next panel it could have completely changed the dynamic of the fight. However when it came to chase scenes especially one of the ones that happened early on they were done very well so I have to give it props for that even if the fights aren't really up to par. Big shout out to the colouring on this as well. There's this real distinction between when you're on the ground and when you're on the sky because when you're on those lower levels everything is coloured in a very blocky way. It almost feels like it's trying to have this pulp vibe. There's one scene in particular where you're just going through a city and everything's trying to be neon light but it doesn't really pull it off in the same way that the Umbrella Academy managed to do that. But when you get to the sky which actually acts as a major setting for this book everything's just so much more open. It's got this watercolour style to it. There's minimal line work and it just feels more free and open. Just one last thing on the setting before we jump in to this story but it really surprised me once the character left Chicago just how vast and expansive this art style was. I'm not going to spoil too much here but just having different terrains and exploring how that looked always managed to keep me guessing and it really kept me interested in this book. Willow was such a fun character to follow. I feel like she was basically a superhero that just didn't have any actual powers. She had attitude, a good heart, never backed down from a fight but always managed to find a way out of a situation. And with stories like this I think the success of the title pretty much lives and dies on the main character. You can have the most fascinating world that I actually might genuinely want to live in, but if I want to punch the main character in the face, kind of similar to 
how I want to do that to myself, then I'm probably going to tap out. The supporting characters were also quite memorable, even if some of the designs did look like other characters. Even with someone like Barrows, who's pretty much introduced as a villain, manages to evolve somewhat over the course of the journey that he goes on. And you could tell that everybody in this was still feeling the effects of G-Day, and some of them had lost a lot of stuff. Like, imagine if they would have had, like, an omnibus collection or something, and then they needed to replace it. Maybe they could use, I don't know... The channel sponsor, Organic Price Books. They've got great packaging, fast shipping, and amazing customer services. And if you use code WOOF WOOF, you'll get $2 off your order. And if you're ordering three or more books and you want them to be delivered together, make sure you use code WOOF WOOF, ship it together for 5% off your entire order. Don't worry, you can just copy and paste them from the description down below, and you can use these codes as many times as you like. Edison was a fascinating character as well, and I feel like he really balanced Will out, and there were some points where I really didn't know where he'd stand. I promise, hand on heart, that is not me trying to make an awful joke. But with his family connection, his own physical ability that was actually enhanced because of the fact that there's no gravity, and how he perceived the world as a result of G-Day, really put me in a position where if he turned his back on Willie, I think I'd kind of understand where he was coming from. The opening scene of this book managed to be both horrifying and comedic, which is a really weird combination that not a lot of things can pull off. And even though I knew the concept before I started reading this book, I just loved the way that this played out on the page. From the fact that you just introduced to them on a normal morning and you see Nate going and getting a coffee and it spells but it's not in the right way and then the whole world just gets turned upside down. Great opening, really nailed it and I think it managed to convey the frantic tone and the just energy that this book had for the rest of the issues. I feel like that's something that I've come to expect when I read an Image Comics title like when I reviewed The Walking Dead or Nailbiter. However where most Image Comics titles have failed me and let me down a little bit is with the endings. I'll talk about it more in the spoiler section but there's been very few that have managed to stick the landing but there was never a an issue in this book. It never stayed in one location long enough or linger on any aspect of the plot for too long they became boring. But at the same time it all connected and it managed to tell one cohesive story in these 15 issues. And this might just be me but I got very heavy mirror edge vibes from the first couple of issues. You know there's this delivery service and they all have to do some kind of weird parkour and I really liked that. And then towards the middle it kind of had this snow piercer vibe to it. But in saying that when it turned the final corner and we entered the third arc of this story it felt like it was just doing a complete 180 for the sake of shock value. As well, it kept doing literally the same thing to make it do a 180, so in that case, can I even call it that? I spoke about it a bit in the art section, but the world is a massive strength of this book. Even to the little details like Nate's workout equipment so that he could maintain muscle tone because of the lack of gravity, and admittedly, that's something that's difficult enough to do when you've got gravity, like I'm speaking from experience there. Even to the way that offices are built in this world, and it's minor spoilers, but when you go into the jungle-like environment, you get to see see just how this is different. And what's great is that at the same time there's nothing in this book that makes me think that it's too much of a massive leap in logic. That also played into every character's backstory. Like of course this G-Day would be a massive deal for everyone, it just completely changed the way that we lived our lives. But there was a clear divide between characters that could remember gravity and those that were born without it. And just to go back to Barrows as a character, I love that he was smart enough to make a business out of this situation. I'm not going to touch too much on that because I think I might actually end up spoiling something, but there are always going to be these characters that can adapt and just make money no matter what happens. And it is a bit of a shame the way that his character panned out, I think they actually underplayed him quite a bit, and I wish that his trajectory would have been a bit different, even if he did go on some kind of character development. And with books that have a sci-fi premise, you've often got the issue of, do you fully explain what's happened and ruin the mystery, or do you tell nothing and just crack on with your story? Weirdly, Skyward manages to do a combination of both. The book isn't solely about why gravity doesn't take exist anymore, but at the same time, it doesn't ignore that fact. You will get some form of an answer, but at the same time, it isn't the only thing that carries this book forward. So if you're worried that you're going to be left guessing a little bit too much, or you think that 15 issues isn't going to be enough to answer all those questions, then don't worry, just enjoy this book for what it is, and you will get pretty much the majority of the answer. I'm jumping into the spoiler section now, so if you don't want anything ruined, I'd recommend skipping to the final verdict timestamp down below, but there's only really three things that I want to talk about in this book, and the first one is Nate's death. I had a feeling that this was going to happen mostly because of the fact that they're the father of someone who's the main character in a comic like, the odds aren't really in your favour, but it was still impactful and I felt like it was a really tender moment. What was also great was that in the following issue, it was clear that Willow was trying to deal with her grief by not dealing with it at all. She was just so focused on the task at hand at discovering what these coordinates meant that she'd found from her father's notebook, to distract her from processing what was going on and I just felt like that 
was a great touch and it was great that it still had meaning but at the same time it didn't derail what was going on. But it's a bit of a shame though because all of these emotions and feelings seemed to mostly disappear as soon as it was revealed that her mother's still alive. And it seemed to really undermine Nate's death especially because of the fact that her mother had already moved on and married someone else. Yeah admittedly it'd been 20 years but we'd only just learned that shortly after he died anyway. So it just felt like even though the moment was great it kind of cut itself short with the way they proceeded after that. Lucas becoming the main villain of a series was a bit of a letdown as well. The battle at the end where his faction with all the bugs is trying to conquer the city was fun but at the same time we'd had about three or four different scenes where somebody who was a friend turned into a villain or somebody who was a villain turned into an ally so I was kind of a bit past it at this point. I just felt like for the ending they could have had a bigger bad guy because I really liked Lucas and I thought that he would have been a good addition to Willa and her kind of team that she was building. It did feel like a balloon that was a bit deflated at that point because I was just wishing for something bigger. Not physically because as you can see Lucas is a specimen of a man and I'm jealous. The scene though where Willa found out that their farm was working for Barrows was really funny and I felt like it was a great twist that really caught me by surprise. But the ending and like I said earlier with Image Comics I've always found like they really struggled to stick the landing and with this book I would have found it ironic whether it managed to do that or not. However it managed to subvert that expectation because it's weirdly somewhere in the middle. This was only a 15 issue series so I wasn't really expecting too much but it did manage to wrap everything up neatly and it managed to touch base with pretty much every major character that we've had in this series but at the same time it didn't feel like it was that big of a deal. Willow and Edison ended up together which I think was great because I really wasn't sure if they were going to get together. That was really a slow burn of a relationship. But then she pretty much immediately up and leaves so that she can go and see the world with her mother. So it didn't really feel like a conclusion because they were together but at the same time they're not going to be together for a long amount of time. I'm not sure if they try and set up a sequel series because I know a few image titles have done that but I was just kind of sat there like okay I guess the book's over. This is my final verdict and I love image comics. It's always been a haven when I need something different whether I need a long series or something short or maybe just something in the middle sci-fi horror it's pretty much always got me covered and Skyward is an excellent addition to the plethora of fantastic comics that image comics has to offer and one that I feel may unfortunately fly or even in this case float under the radar after a couple of years. I hope that doesn't happen that's why I recommended it on my where to start image comics even though I'd only read the first story arc. But after reading the full thing I do have to admit that I don't feel like Skyward is trying to be in the upper echelon of Image Comics titles because for the 15 issues that I had with it it really managed to tick a box. I needed a break between superhero books and for a light sci-fi story that tells me a really interesting tale in a fascinating world that I actually wouldn't mind living in and with a bunch of intriguing characters and an art style that I don't think gets enough attention or praise Skyward managed to give me exactly what I needed right now so I do give it a strong recommendation I think it's definitely worth picking up but with some of the issues that I did have with it especially with the lackluster ending I can say that you don't need to drop everything that you're doing right now to go and get it but at the same time I'm going to give it a very respectable score of 70%. Woof woof! So that's my video, make sure you join us on our reddit page r slash community so that we can discuss this book further. Share this video if you want, give it a thumbs up, all that kind of stuff helps and I do appreciate it. But until next time, just make sure that you stay safe and stay mad all you dogs. Woof woof! See you at the next video.